Hi and welcome everyone to the very first videoed practice from my home home here in Ubud, Bali. Uh, yeah, it's just such an honor and a privilege. This is the first time in my whole life I've ever actually had a home. <laughs> And, uh, and of course, bless the home with Kuan Yin, who will be joining the practice um, with us through the camera. So this yin is a really beautiful one. It's simple. You can absolutely do it at home. Um, you don't need any props, although today I'm going to use a bolster in particular for one posture. So if you do have like a thick, chunky bolster or two smaller bolsters, I would pause the video and grab those now. And if you don't have any props, you can also use like a cushion at home. It could be anything from a circular couch cushion to even a, a thicker um, like pediatric cushion from your bed as well. Anything that you can use as a prop underneath your arms and between your torso. So the intention of practice today really is, is that of calming your heart as an organ calming your heart as a really beautiful, emotional, and energetic center. And in my own philosophy, once the heart's feeling calmer, it's a lot easier for your Shen to be anchored within its home, which is your heart. So when you hear the word Shen, one of the simplest ways to describe it is the Shen is quite literally the spirit of your heart. And you really see it in other people when they've kind of got this warm auric field, right? this glowy light about them. You'll really notice it in your own eyes and other people's eyes when they're kind of shiny and clear and bright. That means the Shen is home, um, the Shen is really anchored, and the heart is nourished, it's in good harmony. So this practice really is taking a mixture of uh, meridian tapping and then a few specified asanas to help to um, put a, a pressure, a compression, and therefore tonify the chi of your heart and small intestine. And then also like a stretching, a pulling, and a tension, which might help to disperse possibly if there's a little too much fire, a little excess of energy going on. So it's a well-rounded practice that absolutely anyone can use. So let's get started. We're going to begin today with body tapping and we'll start where your heart moves more superficial as a meridian and that'll be right literally into the center of your armpit area. Now with meridian tapping, please don't be shy. You can be like quite vigorous and slap yourself with self-love, <laughs> but the slapping is really to, you know, get the energy moving. That's the intention. So you can begin by lifting up your right arm taking your left hand underneath your armpit and just starting to slap under your armpit. It's waking up this part of your body. And then take your slaps and move along the underline of your arm. All the way down to the underline of your forearm. Ooh, it's more sensitive today all the way to your outer pinky packet. So your outer hand and your outer pinky finger. And then you're gonna switch. So turn your palm down and start to slap the outside of your pinky finger, outside of your hand and your wrists, outside of your lower forearm, outer elbow area, and then just tracking here along sort of the back end of your upper arm, moving to your shoulder. And as best you can, tap the very center of your shoulder blade, very center. And then start to make a little zigzag up to the top of your shoulder, the traps. You might want to tap lighter now. And just tapping up through the side of your neck. It's always a Bit of a congested tense area in my own experience and then you might simply want to use the tips of your fingers and just kind of tap to the middle of your cheek area and then you can zig out and tap to the very center of your tragus some of you might have ear piercings there so you can gently tap your ear piercing nice 
and then we'll repeat on the other side. So right hand to left armpit. Underline of your arm. Lower part of your forearm. Outer hand. Palm down, tapping, outer pinky, outer hand, moving up your forearm. All right, don't be shy. Tapping your outer upper arm, best you can, going to the middle shoulder area. Trap. Gentle now, side of your neck. And just coming across with your fingers. Middle cheek for today is great. And then zigging out to the tragus area, which is that little, little triangle flap of your ear. Good. From here, relax your hands down for a moment. Simply close your eyes and just feel warmth stimulation and if you enjoy visualization imagine deep in the center of your physical heart which sits to the left of your midline the most beautiful ruby red bright rich blood color just emanating warmth from your heart as a literal organ and just radiating out across your chest and moving down through your inner arm area and outer arm area, running all the way down, warm liquid to the very tip of your pinky fingers on either hand. And as your hands calm down, we'll move into Nadi Shodana, a balancing breath, just helping mind and heart be calm as we enter the practice of yin. So you can lift up your right hands, touch your index and middle fingers together, and in this variation, just place these fingers where you feel your third eye is. So between your eyebrows and above your brow line. Take your thumb to your outer right nostril and just rest it there. Whatever breath you have left, exhale fully through both nostrils. And now seal your right nose with your thumb and slowly inhale, left side. Seal your left with fourth finger and exhale, right side. Inhale right, seal, exhale left. Inhale left, bringing in a cooling, lunar, calming quality. Seal, exhale right. And as you inhale right, breathing in a warm, radiant, sun-like quality. Seal and exhale left. Last time, inhale, breathing in moon energy, left side. And this time when you feel full, hold your breath in at the top and pause. Seal your left nostril, exhale right nose. Same as you feel your breath pour out, just rest in the emptiness, no breath, pause. Inhale right side, sun energy, solar energy. Hold your breath in at the top and pause. 
Seal your right nose, exhale left, smooth, slow. And just that curiosity to rest in the emptiness with no breath for a moment. Relax your right arm down. Return to breathing evenly and equally through both sides of your nose. If you have any private intention for yourself, for practice, just placing it now in your mind and also deep down in your chest, in your heart space. Any intention for harmony, for peace, compassion, connection. Beautiful. Once you set your intention, you can blink your eyes open and we'll set up for the first asana, which is beautifully simple. So you can come and sit down on your bum and reach your legs out in front of you. Feel free to give them a little jiggle and a wiggle as you need. And then from here, taking a cushion if you have one and putting it on your lap, one big bolster or two small bolsters. And so once you've got your bolsters in place, I'm using two little ones today. I'm going to lower your right arm down on top of the bolster and then simply cross your left arm over top. So it's just like eagle arms. See if you can wrap your forearms and just bring your palms to one another to touch. Now what we're doing is really spreading apart your shoulder blades and opening the three bands of trapezius muscles um, that are at the back of your heart area between your shoulders. So once you've found your eagle arms, start to round your torso forward. And for some of you, you can even rest your forehead down on your forearms. This should not feel uncomfortable, so please let your legs relax. Whether they roll in or out, it's totally welcome. And if for any of you, you're just not feeling this in your shoulders, you might want to take away one of your props and see if bowing down deeper, yeah, helps the sensation through your shoulders and also coming into your back body. Offer your inhale deep to the back of your heart area, your thoracic spine. And on your exhale, just imagining your shoulder blades kind of melting away from one another. And a few more moments, just letting your body get used to this shape. And starting to feel the pull of gravity reach up and draw your bones closer to the floor. And once you've found a position that you know you can maintain comfortably, then invite yourself to come into a gentle stillness. A stillness that would, of course, pulsate with your breath. But a stillness that's also non-rigid, non-fixed. There's a fluidity. All of us will hold tension in different areas. But for so many, the shoulders tend to get tense, um, particularly if you're a care of the family at home or running a business. Any feelings of responsibility for other people, um, if you're highly sort of empathetic towards your loved ones, 
Um, sometimes even energetically we can take on our loved one's experiences without even realizing it. And sometimes this results in some tightness or thickening around the shoulders. Uh, it could be like sensations of thickness or dense, a density. So breathe in a way, it's kind of like reclaiming your body as your house. And your breath is like a beautiful crystalline cloth, just kind of wiping out any dust or debris, any old little flecks of dirt that they just serve no purpose to be resting in your house right now. start to feel a deepening sensation all the way down through your erect spina muscles and for some down through your lower back, your hamstrings, maybe even the backs of your legs. So this pose is also affecting your uh, bladder line in terms of meridians. And you can think of it as a, a river of energy that really houses and supports the element of water. And so water and fire in this moment, how beautiful. Offer a last deep inhale right into the back of your heart area. Can you melt further as you exhale? And simply start to lean your weight back in your sitting bones can unhook your hands, unravel your arms, and just come up to a nice long spine. If you are quite back sensitive, you can bring your hands on the floor like Dandasana. And just push your hands into the earth, straighten your arms, and draw your tummy in a little bit so you offer yourself some support. Feel free to leave the bolster of the cushion exactly where it is. And from here, come lay down on your back Relax your arms down either side. Oh my gosh, how good does this feel? And just allow all your fluids and your blood now to run into the back area of your energetic heart. Back of your shoulder blades, your small intestine meridian is zigzagging around there. Mm, back of arms. And if you know that there's been a little tether or friction in your heart recently, it's just a gesture to imagine kind of giving whatever you're processing, whatever you're going through, giving it back to the floor, giving it back to nature, and letting experiences that no longer support growth or evolution learnings or lessons, just letting them return home to be recycled and renewed because sure enough, there'll be another lesson coming soon. <laughs> oh, the joy of human life. feel sort of the sensations subside, the tingling, a really fun and super easy way to transition from here is to bend your legs at your knees, lift your feet up to the sky one by one, and just rest your hands down on the floor either side of your hips. If you stiffen your body, take a deep breath in, and as you exhale, legs down, sit your torso up, super, super simple. Okay. So let's get set up for the second side of your eagle arms that are supported today with a bolster. 
and done in a seated forward fold. So we're combining a few moves. You're going to take your left arm underneath your right arm. Make an eagle wrap as best as you can. Hook your elbows over your bolster and then start to lean your body weight forward. And please feel free to play around, like if something doesn't feel right, it might be that you need two cushions instead of one. And as another option, if you don't like doing forward folds, you could also do this shape, laying down prone on your tummy and just reaching your elbows out in front of you. It's the same target area, back of heart, upper spine, triple band of trapezius. And you know, in these sort of heart-based practices, when you hear language such as harmony, um, what does that mean for you? What's your felt experience when you feel harmonious inside of your own body? And what about when you feel harmonious inside a, a relationship? A feeling of harmony within your own community. You feel like there's more room to physically deepen, by all means, you can caterpillar your spine forward. Allow the weight of your skull to even rest deeper on your hands and allow that drop of your skull to press your forearms a little further to your legs as your connective tissue just starts to stretch like a warm elastic band. If it feels true for you, perhaps inviting some sighs here at the end of just like ah, letting your heart unwind from the day, letting your digestive processes be soothed, the analytical mind just rest down and take its seat in the warm place of your red light heart. And then leaning into your sitting bones, untangling your hands and your arms. And feel free to repeat Dandasana if that's supportive for you. And from here, coming to lay down for one more rebound, just letting all the bloods and the fluids return to a more homeostasis state. From laying down on your spine, you can just place your bolster over to one side and come and simply roll over onto your tummy. I'm going to take open wing pose. And if you've never done this before, 
You can either stretch your right arm out to the side like an open wing or you can do open cactus with your right arm bent at the elbow. Both are correct. Whether your elbow joint is slightly uh, above your shoulder or in alignment with it, it really doesn't matter. What matters is where and how you feel it. Right? And we're looking for a deep stretch here into the pectoral muscle area. So once you're laying down and you've got your arm stretched out in a straight line or like a bent wing, you can roll to your outer right hip area and rest the side of your right head down on the floor. Of course, you can put a cushion there if that helps your neck feel more supported. Yeah. For me today, it's tight, so I'm just going to rest my top leg on the bottom leg. But some of you might like to move your top leg into half of a bridge, and others might go into a double-legged bridge. Left hand is supporting you on the floor. You can absolutely press into tented fingers. You can relax a flat palm. Or you can move your left arm around to your lower back area and kind of hold yourself in what's known as a half bind. And again, once you've found your position, maybe like a 70% experience of sensation, then it's time to close down your eyes. Bring your beautiful mind down into your chest area. Allow your breath to be soothing to your tissues. As you really indulge in feeling the sensation, your pectoral muscles, the front of your shoulder, depending on the variation, any and all parts of your right arm. noticed in recent experiences the more kind of quiet I become in my life including meditations and just you know just having that moment of quiet peacefulness before the day starts it makes such a difference to the state of heart and therefore impacts state of mind We're all very unique in our body constitution, but personally for me, I've replaced coffee with like herbal teas or an almond matcha in the morning. And wow, just noticing such a difference in my emotionality, uh, my capacity to be really present and connected to people, less irritable, less bitey less sassy, to be honest. <laughs> and so your practice is just one tool of many to self-soothe, to land your spirit in your body, and really take up full residence in every cell, every organ, every particle. So breathe just like that in a way that you're taking up full residence of your body. A very generous inhale. Perhaps an open mouth sigh. <sighs> and as you come, roll onto your tummy. Ooh. You can lay down on your belly. Perhaps relax your right arm down just so the blood can flow. And turn your head to the right. And we'll even this out in a moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wanting to be still until the sensations that you feel in your right arm really calm down.
And when you feel like it's time to move, you can turn your face down and reach your right arm out, whether it's a straight line or a little bent cactus arm. And roll to your outer left hip. If you ever want to make this deeper, you can also use your right hand and kind of manually pull your left ribs further forward. You can also press your pelvis further forward, which tends to deepen the stretch. And then choose what you'd like to do with your top leg, whether it's bent or straight. And lastly, repeating whatever you did with your right hand, right arm. Same as what you did on the other side. And then just allowing your eyes to close down, that you rest one of your senses. It tends to heighten other senses, such as feeling and physical sensation. It's a wonderful old tale or fable that comes from China. It just popped into my head. So I'll share it now. It's just from my memory. So please excuse me if it's not exactly correct. It's a sharing of a story. And the story goes that a young man uh, graduated college with great honors. And he was just so excited to run home and share this good, good news with his parents. And on his way home, he bumped into his grandfather and he was all bubbling and brimming with enthusiasm. And his grandfather put his hands on his shoulders, looked him in the eyes and said, Grandson, I'm so sorry to tell you, something's happened to your parents. Take a deep breath and go home slowly. Well, this young man, a little bit bewildered and, oh my goodness, confused, his mood, of course, dropped. And he found that when he went home and opened the door, both of his parents were there in wonderful health, radiant and joyful to see him. And in his confusion of his grandfather, he began to share the good news with them once again. The next day when he saw his grandfather, he said, Grandfather, why on earth would you suggest that my parents were not okay or that something was wrong? I'm so confused. And his grandfather said, Dear grandson, too much joy in your heart is also a dangerous thing. Your heart may live a long life when it's balanced and harmonious. I just, I absolutely love that story, especially I find in the West, there's like such a quest to be um, joyful and enthusiastic every day. And this kind of concept of like, it's beautiful for a moment and within balance. So just bringing your attention back to your body, especially if you kind of went into your mind with the story. Mm. Take a last deep breath, whether it's a yawn or a sigh. And same thing, just coming to lay down, please, on your tummy. Mm. You might want to pick up your whole head and turn it to the left-hand side. And just rest and relax your left arm down the side of your body so it can recover. We'll just take a moment here. Once the tingling in your arm calms down, place your hands underneath your shoulders and simply press your hips back. We're going to move into a closed leg child's pose. And the reason for this is sometimes with open wing, there's a little twist through your spine and some people feel it in their sacrum. 
I know I do, especially if you ever had an injury there. So closed child, really the intention is just to kind of smooth out any twist, any little compression through particularly your mid and lower back area. So arms resting down by your sides so that you can really relax your shoulders going back to the work of the first pose. And then of course descending the weight of your skull down. Can you breathe with enough passion that your belly kind of presses into your thighs, lifts and massages through your mid and lower back area? We will be returning to this posture so you can think of it is split into a two-part series. Welcome a last breath. And slowly roll up through your spine. And the next pose we'll do is puppy. So quite literally getting into the heart here by stretching and opening the armpit and creating a little bit of a pull and pressure through the underarm. For puppy, Hips are roughly over knee joints. If you do have kind of knee joint instability, some issues there, you can tuck your toes under. Walk your arms forward. They might be a shoulder width distance or wider. And then start with your forehead, just kind of bowing and resting onto the floor. If you feel like you need some padding for your knees, of course you can go fetch a blanket or something to support you. And then personally in my body, I like to turn my head one way for half of the pose. And if you're joining me, you'll feel how it gets a lot deeper in your armpit flexion. And actually, if any of you are wanting to go even deeper with your armpit flexion, because maybe you're just born that way within your joints, or you might be rather flexible, depends whether it's bones or tissue. You can also use blocks underneath your hand and this will elevate your arm bones up a little higher. Mmm, today this feels delicious. So it'll change all the time. And the question I personally have been loving to contemplate almost daily is on the quest of being you know more open and more heart-centered the question of like what are you opening yourself to and just to get more clear on that like what it, what experiences are you wanting to open yourself up to what are you inviting more of into your life And it's only my personal opinion from where I'm at in my journey now, but I feel like with opening, you know, discernment is really valuable to be discerning uh, whom you're opening to, at what times in your life, and really just trusting that natural pulsation of, you know, there's many elements and seasons that run through your body there's a time when you're resourced to be more open and outgoing and perhaps a time when you're more depleted to be conservative and more sustaining. If you've chosen a variation where your head is turning one way, I just recommend to press into your hands, lift your head, and turn it in the opposite direction so your neck is balanced.
Offering a last few deep breaths here. If there's anything to sigh off, just ah, letting it slough off of your body. And then please bring your awareness down into the palms of your hands and do press into your palms so they actually activate muscles around your arms. Right? Take care of your joints. And then from here, really simple, just walk your hands back, rest your hips back on your heels, and one more time, close child's. And my recommendation is again, rest your arms down by the sides of your body so we can just return the flow of blood all the way down to your pinky fingertips. And close child's welcoming a deep breath into your back body and a descending. And again, you can simply roll up through your spine bone by bone, letting your head just kind of stack on your heart at the end. We'll do something a little less common in the yin practice. And that suggests the way you're sitting now for a guided meditation. And if you want to sit on your bolster or on a block, something to elevate your hip bones above your knee joints, it's just nice. It keeps the energy flowing and the blood moving. And once you're sitting in a way that you feel comfy, ooh, the wind is coming, you can rest your hands, palms down on your legs and simply close your eyes. Welcome a deep inhale of your environment, the air around you. Self-soothing. This practice is known as the inner smile. And it's actually found in martial arts and probably Taoism, I'm making an assumption. But its design was using memory um, to actually strengthen your heart as an organ. Fascinating. So let yourself now wander back in time with your consciousness, with your mind, and recall a, a moment in your life where you really, really felt the experience of love. Now this might be that initial wave of romantic love where it's like, oh my gosh, this might be the one. And it might be a different kind of love, like a little child's embrace. Or rescuing an animal and feeling their trust as they lean their furry little body into your body. And sometimes love is best experienced in nature. So your memory might be of you deep in nature having an experience with quite literally mother and the environment. So whatever memory surfaces for you today, really amplify it with your imagination. Do you remember the time of day? Do you remember where you were? What was the temperature like in the air and on your skin? Was anything touching you? Can you bring back any felt sense, sensation, Is there any smell? As you start to amplify this memory, you know, bringing in sight, really seeing this person, this being, the nature landscape, whatever it might be. 
And as you enter this memory fully in a way that you're reliving it, start to notice if there's any sensations moving through your body. Any feelings of warmth, expansion, whatever it might be. And can you consciously start to circulate this feeling in your body from your heart down through your arms, from your heart down through your torso, from your heart down through your legs. from your heart all the way up through your throat and all the way up into your mind and your brain space. Quite literally bathing yourself in the vibration and sensation of, of love. And allow your felt experience to linger, really marinating in it. As the memory you've conjured now dissolves and fades into the background. And can you maintain this sort of loving warmth, this inner quality of your body without any attachment to a person, a place, or a time in your life, but rather just feeling this inner smile, this inner love, for love alone. I invite you to carry this warm radiance with you from now all the way through the last part of practice to the end of class. If you prefer to remain seated, of course, you're more than welcome. But otherwise, the invitation is to make your way laying down with your two legs bent and your arms just casually sprawled out either side. And take a twist, you can lift your hips, move them a little to the right, lift your feet right up and off of the floor, and then lower your legs over to the left. Of course, you might wanna adjust your ribs a little bit, turning your chest more to the sky. If your back is just feeling tweaky today, you take your bolster, your block, and place it in between your thighs. That'll make it softer. And then up to you if you want to pick up your head and turn it away from your bent knees. It's personal choice. Wherever you are, let your eyes close again. And really enjoy just the simplicity of like breathing life through your spine. Just welcome a last deep breath. Again, like you're cleaning the interior of your body from any old debris or stagnancy. And please do draw your navel into your spine, support yourself. Use your inhale breath, bring your legs back up to center. And then just balancing out your sacrum on the floor. I mean, just having a moment of resting your two knees together.
And for your second side, moving your hips a little bit over to the left. As you pick up your two legs, both bent, lowering them to the right. Any adjustments of your shoulders, of your ribs, and possibly rolling your head away from your knees. This feels even in your body, the last conscious breath within the shape. And I encourage you to draw your tummy in, use an inhale to lift your legs back up. Definitely adjust your sacrum, TP your knees so they're just resting in and touching one another. And for some, you'll feel absolutely fine and others, like myself, there's just a little tingling around the SI joint area. And a personal favorite, if you want to join me, is to bring your hands uh, right up to your kneecaps. You probably need to lift your feet off the floor. And then from there, press your legs ever so softly forward and let your arm bones go completely straight. And from this shape, literally, it's just hanging your sacrum into gravity. Everyone's so unique, but personally, this is like a real feeling of, of comfort. I remember when I was a, a little girl, I had uh, chronic insomnia uh, and a lot of nightmares. It's actually one of the signs of heart imbalance. And the only way my mom could get me to go back to sleep was just to put her hand on my sacrum and ever so softly, gently rock. And she would do that until my eyes would close. So yeah, something about this moment brings that memory back. Maybe you've got your own memory. If there's any last little gesture you would like before Shavasana, please feel free to add any additional stretch or movement. Personally, I can already feel a, a downward descent. It's yummy. So when you're ready, you can stretch out your limbs and just lay down on the floor, maybe with a blanket over your body, as we enjoy a couple of minutes to rest and fully soak in the goodness of this sweet, gentle practice. <sighs> So welcome to continue resting for as long as you like. 
you do feel ready, come back to your breath. Come back to feeling your beautiful body as it lays itself on the floor. Any movement, if you're craving it. You might like to roll over to your left side. So you get a moment of your nourishing blood. Blood really helps the anchoring of your shen. It's to rest and replenish your heart. And then using your arms to bring your body up to a comfy sitting position. It's always worth grabbing a block or a cushion to sit on. Once you're sitting, easy cross-legged sukhasana. Your hands can be down for grounding or palms up for receiving. And just simply letting your eyes close. And as you sit here, it's really simple. It's just time to acclimatize to integrate. And as a gesture, you can draw your palms to Anjali Mudra, an offering at your heart. Just offering literally to your own heart today more sense of ease of being at home in your body and from being home finding compassion for yourself for your inner obstacles and also for the external world and all the little frictions that come with being human and being a part of community and if you feel to, perhaps just sending a wish or a prayer now to bring more harmony to your own community. Perhaps more fam harmony to your family and to your chosen loved ones. And I bow my head to all of you at home or wherever you are. Thank you so much for taking the time to practice this video um, from my home in Ubud, Bali with all the bamboo trees and I hope the good vibes translating through the screen. Um, I'm sending you a lot of love on the journey and just remember practice doesn't have to be long and it can absolutely be short and sweet. Sometimes all we need is like a few moments to hum, come home and the picture gets clearer again, and it's so much easier to participate with the world outside. So, see you soon. Have a beautiful day or night, and um, until next time.